Welcome everyone. I'm making this video because there was like nothing on the internet about how the fan drives on a Bobcat come apart. So there's a fan that basically is pulley on this side. Well, this is the belt to it. There's a fan that goes right up here. And it's the only fan, it's the cooling fan. So it pulls air through the heat for the through the heat exchanger for the hydraulic fluid and also for the radiator. Well anyways, it'll come out and it'll actually be together like this. It'll be together like that. I've already taken this apart. The other thing I've already done is um, the fan wheel. It's right here. This is exactly how it's gonna be. It'll be attached, those four bolt holes right here in the center. Attach it to that right angle drive. And then this, it has threads in here, here and here, but mine were stripped and were useless. Anyways, what I ended up doing was I took a pry bar, which is here somewhere, I'll find it. Well, anyways, I took a pry bar. Got it wedged between the bottom of this fan, which you want to be careful on this because there's fins under here too. And anyways, so I went under there with a pry bar. Actually, here they are right here. With this, got it wedged under there. And then on the opposite side, directly across from it, I got a relatively thick screwdriver wedged under it as well. Once I got those wedged under it, then I took the hammer where was that anyways I took a hammer and I just simply this would have been all the way through I'll try to make this similar to what it would be so this would be all the way through like that right the fan drive sets on here those are your four bolts all I did was I put the nut back on here so it wouldn't ruin the threads and I started tapping down on this shaft right here so that it would start pushing that out again that's with pressure being pushed up hopefully the bolts on yours are not stripped out like mine are. if these two holes right here are not stripped out if these two holes so this one and this one are not stripped out you will be able to put like a pulley puller on there or um, I think we ended up using a power steering pump pulley puller but same concept anyways it just didn't work out because in my case like I said the threads are just not there hopefully yours do if not that's another way to do it once you do that okay there's gonna be I'll get this somewhat close there's gonna be a snap ring on this end that's also so there's a a seal not a sealed bearing but an actual seal that goes on the end of this to keep the hydraulic or the gear oil in there I got sealed bearings because they're cheaper and it's still going to be an oil bath so eventually if those seals quit it's not going to let dirt and debris in it's just going to simply let more oil in there to uh, lubricate those bearings but once you have this snap ring out right, then on the other end there's going to be another snap ring you can see the groove back in here on this end there will be a bearing just like that the bearing will be on there and slid all the way in or most of the way in rather it won't go quite all the way as you can see from the shaft and then this is thread in there as well and this holds that bearing on and then as the snap there's a snap ring just like on the other it goes all the way around this. I will show you guys once it's all the way together these are the new bearings that I got. This is the part number from Napa. This is the bearing that was in it, which is a 6304. It's a Z14 Korea Fafnir, or F A F N I R. Foxtrot Alpha, Foxtrot November, India Romeo. So that's the numbers from what's in there, or what was in there. And then this, 
is simply what I replaced it with, which is a 6304RS. Um, the only thing that's different between these two is simply one sealed, one is not. Not the end of the world. So on the end of this, take this, and it's going to get pushed on there pretty hard. I had to, I had to pry it off. See the groove that the snap ring actually goes into. Hopefully, you have better snap ring pliers than what I've got. These ones aren't the best by any means. Get it up top, it's pretty easy because then you can just take something and gently tap it down. Hopefully it's something clean so you don't put a bunch of dirt back in there after you've cleaned the, the housing out. Alright. All right. So that's back in there. Flip this back over. Because remember that end is gonna get our seal put on it. On this end. something very similar with the exception of so that'll be just like that put your snap ring in on this side so that whenever you're uh, setting this in place it's not going to push out past where your groove is for your snap ring and then once you get it in far enough on this side you'll put your other snap ring in I'm actually going to wait until tomorrow because I don't have my new seal here yet. This grease cap, I guess you could call it, is uh, pretty easy to pop out, use. This is what I ended up using, just a flat um, pry. Anyways, hammered it under a few times and just worked my way around. It actually came out pretty easily. So when my seal comes in tomorrow, I'll make you the closing video. Like I said, I'm, I don't understand, these skid steers have been out for a long time and they've actually used this fan drive on like the 700 series, the 800 series, like the, the old ones, like the late 80s, early 90s Bobcats and then obviously the S250s, S, I don't know, probably 300s, 400s. They've used it for a while, um, but they are very easily rebuildable. Um, if you don't rebuild it, it's roughly $1,000 to buy a new one and I mean, if that's which, the way you want to go, but this was actually not bad at all. Um, was able to pop this out pretty easily. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I've definitely had harder projects. So tomorrow morning we'll be back. I'll throw that seal in, and you guys will actually see it completely together, and then I'll explain. I'll show you the take, putting it together process, because I didn't think about making it, taking it apart video, because I kind of thought there would be one, and I was wrong. So at that point, I was determined to figure it out. We'll Alright, we got our seal in. Shout out to Bobcat, by the way, as the seal is made in the US. So, that didn't impress me a little bit. I know that they outsourced their engines to Kubota and a few other components, so I didn't really expect the seal to be made here either. But, needless to say, it is. So, what we're going to do, we're going to tap that bad boy in with a rubber mallet.
So you have that seal, right? So when you take it apart, this is what you're gonna see. So when you have that seal, it's, you can't do much with it right now. What you do is turn around here, take this snap ring out, I guess I should specify, this grease cap or oil cap, whatever you wanna call it, will be on this end, it's just pressed in. You'll take that out. Take this snap ring out, come to this end, set it up on something so you can basically and put a nut on the end of this so you don't tear up your shaft or your threads. I put two nuts on there just to make sure that we didn't tear up threads. You'll tap that out, it'll come out. Once you get that out, then you can pop your seal off if it's bad. If it's not bad and say the bearing up here isn't bad and it stays in, you're good to go. If not, if it happened to me, happens to you, and this rod or the shaft comes out and the bearing actually comes out with it, I had to push mine all the way through here and then I used a extension. This is an old extension. I've been using it to beat on things for a long time. It's a craftsman. Eventually I'll trade it in for a new one. But it'll fit right there on the end of it. So when you keep that nut on there, you can do it that way. I did it this way where you have the nut on the end. So this just goes into the end of the uh, shaft and then the nut basically keeps it from sliding off on you and just tap this out. And it, like I said, that bearing will catch down here where this other bearing sets and then it'll push off and then you can tap it out and bring it out this side. Um, oh, part number for the seal for this end and actually it's the same seal for this end of the pulley side too. 665 Um I found it at Bobcat, local Napa wasn't able to get it, so I don't know for sure that it's a special one or not, but now I'm ready to bolt this back together and then we will put some uh, oil in this bad boy to keep her all looped up. On my machine, these bolts that hold the two angle drive pieces together uh, they were blue Loctited, so I'm going to go ahead and blue Loctite mine as well uh, on the putting it back together part. Just under 24 ounces of gear oil right here, so let's see how much of it takes. Go ahead and put the plug back in because this oil all shares in there. So I want to set this upright. It's been a few times. time for the cheap seats here don't don't do like I did just actually order both of the seals that way you don't have to worry about it but either way we'll get it fixed um, I did use an impact a little quarter inch impact to take all this apart some of them I had to loosen with the ratchet and then took them the rest of the way apart but they do uh, you know, you got to make sure you tighten everything down well. Now, the fan shroud does not come off. The fan shroud stays on the machine. I guess you could take it off as a whole if you wanted to, but needless to say, I did not. Uh, this is the bottom part of the shroud. This will come off with it. And when you take it off, When 
you take that off, you should pay attention to how it goes. That way you're not in the predicament I'm in where I gotta go look at the machine. So I had to go look at the machine to see how this went. Pretty simple. This notch right here is cut out for where it goes. The, there's a line that goes up to your hydraulic filter underneath of the cab or behind the cab, I guess. When you flip the cab up, you'll see it. This side over here just has nothing there to attach to. So there's that. I went and confirmed to make sure I had mine set right. So the small notch in the on mine, the small notch, which is this one right here, has to go on the uh, let's see here, the bottom left when you're looking at it with the pulley over to the right. So just like this, that's how mine goes. I imagine that's could be wrong. I've been struggling. I had to call a professional. There he is. What? <laughs> I needed help. We're trying to line this bolt up. Fun times. But not so fun times. This bolt needs to go through a sleeve that's inside the shroud. It's actually a sleeve that looks just like this one. And it's just not wanting to cooperate. I had to have him come out and help me hold it up. Um, it, it's just a pain. It's not really an easy way to do it. The best thing I ended up finding out was putting a 2x4 under here, not on the hose directly, but on the block that's right behind it, and lifting up the motor just like that. And then uh, you just have to look. Like, you'll have to pry this down to look to see if things are lined up or not. That's the best All right, see how, or if, the van works. I couldn't find any information anywhere on the internet about how it works or how it happens or how it comes apart or any of that. So I found all kinds of videos of people buying a new one, pulling the old one off, putting the new one on, which was relatively simple, obviously. But I was curious to how, sorry, I was curious to how it came apart and what I had to do to replace the bearings in it because it was a lot cheaper. It cost me a total of like 60 bucks for bearings and that seal. So 80 bucks with the other seal. Um, just way cheaper so hope it was helpful if uh, I mean generally our channel does farming videos freedom farms if you're interested in that subscribe if not at least give this video a thumbs up for the help hopefully it gave you have a great week actually have a blessed week and we'll see you next time